I know you've all been waiting for something with a bit of meat on it. And here it is. Three pounds on eBay gets you the Digi Makeover. It has a camera in it. It has a touchpad. It has a stylus. It has shoulder buttons and it has a composite lead uh, and a battery door apparently. So what more could you want for the money? Well, I think you'd want something working. And by the way, this is by Girl Tech. Girl Tech, so yeah. Um, well, it looks like somebody already had a quick look at the batteries and noped out of that. So I think the first thing we're gonna do with this is cleaning. I'm just gonna get rid of these. Batteries chucked. Now for the next part, I have my handy vinegar. It's just normal distilled white vinegar that I buy in five litre bottles because I use it for everything. It's def definitely the most universal cleaner you can get. And you don't really want to flood it, so just be very careful. I'm just going to mist it. Did you see that? Just Or did you miss it? Okay, let's, let's skip by that joke. Um, waiting now for it to do something. It's just, it's just sitting on the surface. You can wipe it away from here, actually. I think it's good for loads of things. If, if, please list down below any uses for vinegar you have other than putting it on your chips. Now, I'm just gonna first give it a, just a gentle little rub with the old brushy brush. And you can actually see that in alone is enough to start taking off the green gunk. And actually, it's already starting to work on everything else, which is supoib. So what I'm gonna do now then, is actually just start with the actual cloth stage. And it's really quite simple. I'm just getting a bit of this blue paper roll. Maybe some kitchen towel will do if that's what you've got. Maybe some toilet roll even if it's not so flimsy. I know some of you like to buy that one ply. <laughs> Don't be rocking that one ply around here. That's not gonna help you. I think you need a minimum of two plies. That's what it says on the back of the compatibility chart. So those actually look quite shiny now. I think they're okay. So I'm just gonna rub the other ones down by hand. I'm not even gonna bother brushing them. It seems that the filth was contained, which is a bit worrying that maybe a liquid got in or it was submerged. And we might, we might open this up later anyway and have a look what's inside. But I, I kind of feel it would be nice to get it working as intended. And look at this 3D printed design. Some people, they don't test what they make, do they? Look at that. Always clogging up. Let's get that in there. I'm going to have to make myself my own battery. Doodad. Right, let's chuck those in. Oh, we're not seeing any LED action. That is a bit worrying. Oh, no, there we are. It just needed the old vigorous rub. That's where these vendors go wrong, you know. They're putting this thing on eBay saying it don't work. Well, they say untested, but you know they've they've tried. Um, for next to nothing, whereas they could have probably got at least four pounds if they tested it and it was working. Yes, that looks fine. Right, I think we've got to get a telly sorted, haven't we? time we better clean up a space here there we go great job and we've got a plugger in let's go for the old ext2 me thinks mosh mosh and we'll flip it over oh yeah oh <laughs> We got some music going. I feel the need to turn that down a bit. But it looks good, it's a nice stable picture. The sound is good, nice 16-bit processor. And I do have the gadget in my hand. I'm just gonna let the lead out a bit so we can all see what's going on. Right, <clears throat> let's get the old stylus out, shall we? So how does this work? Well, I'm not seeing a stylus on the screen, but I do see the icons at the bottom do match. So I'm gonna click one, which is that thing. There we go. Digi makeover. So we've got save, backwards, forward. So that's like an undo, redo. 
I would expect to see something here though. There is a camera on it. How do you take a photo? I'm like I'm touching the screen like that's a thing. Right. What's two? Oh, oh, that's better. Right, I'm, I, I don't know. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hang on, now do we, I've got to make sure I've lined up how do you actually take the photo when it comes to that point, but we'll figure that out. I'm a pretty girl. Oh, it's a button, I see. Right, so we've got to go. There we go. <laughs> Okay, we're looking good here. I don't know, just hit save. Yes, hit save, file one. The UI is actually amazingly responsive, which is absolutely surprising. So now we should have a photo. We had we edit this now, so I want to do... Oh, we can apply the old lipstick somehow. It's not entirely intuitive, I have to admit, these these elements here. I'm just saying it shows the lipstick thing and it says one, so I'm pushing one. Nah, don't like it. Let's go back. Let's choose a different thing. Oh, okay, and then I want to do it. Oh, it's so complicated. Girl tech. Alright, what do I do now? Next. Eyes. It's like one of those character generator things. Oh, can draw it here, can we? What a weird thing. Oh, I see, I'm choosing the color of these facial things. Yes, that's more like it. Again, if we're just going from a hardware standpoint, it's actually Again, incredibly uh, responsive. I think we get the idea there, right? You've got a crap camera. It's a bit like the old um, DS and things like that that we used to have. Um, what does that mean? Who knows? I would like to see more of the camera working better. And you can see it's absolutely terrible. So if you want to see the setup on the back office right now, not even sure we can make it out. That's it looking at itself. And then if I was going to give myself a picture on it. Hmm. Yeah, it does seem to be a bit washed out. <laughs> it just looks like something horrific, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. It's doing some rendering something. God knows. Right, I think that's enough of that. I'm just going to open it up and have a look inside now. Do, do, do. It's got a hell of a lot of screws though. You can see there's one, two, three, four, and then a the whole load on the back. It's super well made. I'm guessing this was really designed for quite young children. And looking at the back, it's actually a Radica project. Or shall it be a Radica product? And Radica, of course, known for all their good stuff. I'm trying to think really, the best things that Radica did in my mind are the Mega Drive TV games. But I'm sure if I actually Googled it, I would discover that they were responsible probably for the mass of TV games in the kind of 2000s, I'd want to say, late 90s, up to maybe 2010. I have to admit, I haven't seen really many TV games at all since then. You think now, if you're going to make a TV game, it could be amazing, couldn't it? I mean, it's we do see the um, Commodore 64 Minis, Maxis, the Amiga 500 released now, so they are getting pretty good. And I guess those are the modern version of the TV games. As well, of course, as all the failed TV game projects, the retro ones they like to do. ZX Spectrum. <clears throat> right. Give me a sec here. I think I'm going to go and dig through this. There could be way more screws than we're prepared to sit through. Hmm, very nice. Clever design. Very clever indeed. Okay. Those bumpers are off and they actually clamp the whole thing together. It's very cute. I'd be a bit wary. It could still have that battery juice all in it. And 
<laughs> okay, let's look here. You've got some interesting rubber standoffs here that are obviously putting pressure on certain components in the back which need pressure. You've got your reset switch and then you've got your battery contacts. The pen holder doesn't really do anything apart from mechanical interference fit of the pen. Now, because these wires are in our way, they're going to limit us a little bit, but I guess we are seeing what we already thought we would see. Fortunately, it's not full of massive amounts of detritus at all. Even though the screw heads themselves were really crusty, some of them around the bumper, I think the juice had poured out the back, back of the battery door and out the outside and got into them. I do think this is interesting though. So to get the batteries, uh, sorry, the bumpers to screw into something, they haven't got the screw hole moulded into this piece of plastic. It's actually on an insert. And that could be something that us 3D printing aficionados could consider doing. And also this DC jack's interesting because this is a really standard PCB mount barrel uh, jack, which you see on lots of things, including a lot of things I work on. And they've actually made a nice little bracket to hold it, which is really cool. And then underneath you do have just that touch screen array and there's actually quite a lot really of connections here and you can see here you've actually got X minus X plus so I don't know if that's something to do with the X axis maybe but then you have IOA 15 14 13 and VCC IO just standard IO maybe it's just using some ADC input on something to actually work all that out here's your reset button and then I suspect that this is your proper matrix to the actual screen, screen itself for its uh, various things. Fat, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. There's seven here, isn't it? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 lines. It might give you an idea of the resolution of that. It did seem quite responsive when we were playing with it. And there's your processor here. That's going to be your processor doing all the main heavy lifting of everything. And you've got here your blob. And you can see from the footprint here, this would have been a bit of like NAND memory. And that's your program. But, so the original design would have had the program in, in the standard removable device. And then there's a little device there, which I can't quite read. Um, but that's probably just a controller for the, the touch panel. Ah, OK. And here, this is interesting, you can see the camera module here, and there's a lot of pins off that camera module. Look at that. It's like the processing, it seems, for the camera must be actually done on board on this chip. It's probably a super simple uh, camera module then. Now, just to show you what how small camera modules can get now, this is a camera module that I think oh yeah, it was peanuts. It was literally just a few quid. And this is actually a camera and a processor and a transmitter would you believe it a transmitter and it transmits on some standard public bands to various you know um goggle type things i was gonna say vr type goggles but they're not vr they're just a screen or the screens on your controllers for drones so you could just see how much you can pack in if you're going to put the electronics on board um, but that's really all they've done here. And as a consequence, of course, they've had to bring all of these lines. It's just an unbelievable amount, but it's like a dumb board. But yeah, that does the trick. And then here you've got your video circuitry being lashed into with this big ground. These look like ground um, straps here, by the way, to that board. And they've got a couple of them. They're obviously very serious, heavy duty thinking about that. Um, but you can see your video out is actually very simple and just literally does say there video out and I'm sure it says audio out underneath all of this this blob and you don't need much for composite that's why I mean the chip here is probably connected to that just via these resistors and capacitors uh, just twiddling twiddling the uh, output on it and you can see it's a PAL board made for it so what I am going to do though because we know potentially a bit of that stuff got in here if we're going to bother saving this we might as well try to soak up any juice that's got in there which will of course be trying to corrode that the same way as of course if you've got anything that contains one of those Varta batteries <laughs> that seems to be so popular with devices as their memory backup battery but at the same time seems to just destroy them in time so if you do have that issue try to do that 
Um, but if you look closely on here, there's no actual damage on any of the tracks. They just, everything just looks a little bit furry, like it's been a little bit attacked, but gently attacked, you know, like a kitten attacking you. It's just pouring at you. So I'm going to whack this back together and uh, just, yeah, chuck it on the shelf. Um, probably never to be used again. But there, there you go. If you're interested, go on eBay Oops, and uh, look one up. I can't even remember what it was called. It's so nondescript. Oh, yeah, the Digi Makeover by Girl Tech. There you go.